Number four, the Honourable David Canhut. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, why is he allowing banks to opt out of the Retail Banking Guarantee Scheme? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, participation uh, was voluntary under the previous scheme and remains so under the extension that I announced yesterday. The Honourable David Canhut. Mr Speaker, what are the consequences for the average level of risk borne by the taxpayer if major banks opt out, but small and less creditworthy finance companies stay in. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the consequences for the taxpayer are that the more institutions they guarantee, the more risk there is. At the moment, the contingent liability is, is around $120 billion. Uh, a big part of that is bank uh, deposits. Banks have operated in New Zealand for around 150 years without government guarantees and it's possible that they will be able to do so in the future. Uh, as I said before, participation was voluntary in the current scheme and will remain so in the future scheme. Point of order, the Honourable David. Uh, Mr Speaker, I submit that the Minister hasn't addressed the question. The question was very specific. It was what would be the consequences for the average level of risk? He attempted first, sir, to talk about the total level of risk, which was relevant, and then talked about the voluntary nature of the scheme, which was also relevant. He has not addressed the question. I, the, the member still has further supplementary questions. I think it's a fine, a fine line to draw on that one. I invite the member to, to pursue it through further supplementary questions. I'll give him the chance right now. The Honourable David Cunliffe. To the Minister, have the same major banks further reduced short-term interest rates in line with recent OCR cuts? And if not, what is the Minister proposing to do about that? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, that issue has been discussed extensively in the House, uh, and I maintain the same position. If bank customers don't like the sh margin banks are charging on short-term deposit, short-term, oh, on floating rates, sorry, on floating rates, then they can opt for uh, the six-month rate for mortgages, which happens to be lower. The government's priority is now and always has been that banks keep lending because when they stop lending, people lose jobs. Amy Adams. Supplementary to the Minister. Is the wholesale guarantee scheme altered by yesterday's announcement? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, the wholesale uh, guarantee is not affected by yesterday's announcement. The two schemes are largely independent. Under the wholesale scheme, banks Bank issuers are charged a fee of between 70 and 200 basis points, considerably more than is charged for the retail scheme. There are recent indications in the market that banks will be able to borrow money without the government guarantee, as a number of their parent Australian banks are doing now. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister. Having given the banks a free pass on the retail guarantee scheme and also the interest rate pass-through issue, when will the Minister start to stand up for the interests of hard-pressed Kiwi businesses and households, or will he just continue to roll over in the face of pressure from the big end of town? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that is a, a pretty, pretty silly question. The banks don't get a free pass. The fact is, if they want the guarantee, they will pay for it, uh, and the comments they've made on how much they have to pay for it indicates they don't like it. And if they don't have the guarantee, then they don't pay for it. That seems an entirely logical position. It would be pretty odd if we imposed the guarantee on them. 